Help, Lord, I am weak and bleeding. I heard the Lord told me about that topic this, I mean this morning when I was in the filling station to get fuel. And I heard the Lord said to my ears, he said, talk to my people about help. Help, Lord, for I am weak and bleeding. Can I announce to you tonight that every weakening and bleeding situation of your life will receive the help of the Lord tonight. Amen. My text is taken from Isaiah chapter 41 verse 7. Isaiah chapter 41 verse 7. Isaiah 41 verse 7. Let's quickly look at what the scriptures has for us there. In verse 7 the scripture says, So the carpenter encouraged the goldsmith, and he who smooths with the hammer, him who smote the anvil, saying, It is ready for the soldiering. And he fastened it with nails that it should not be moved. Verse 8. But you, O Israel, are my servant, and whom I have chosen, the seed of Abraham, my friend. Verse 9. You, you, you whom I have, I have taken from the ends of the earth and called you from the chief men thereof and said unto you, you are my servant. I have chosen you and not cast you away. Can I announce to you tonight? The Lord asked me to tell you that he chose you and not rejected you. Amen. The devil is painting ugly situations to make you look like though you are the rejected. Can I say to you, you are the chosen. Amen. The world is going to gather around you. Amen. The season that, that looks as though you are the rejected and deserted are over. Amen. Men shall flock around you Amen. to entreat God's favor upon your life. Amen. He said, fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. Yea, I will uphold you with the right hand of my righteousness. Behold, all they who gathered against you shall be ashamed and confounded. They shall be as nothing, and they who strive with you shall perish. That's the word of the Lord for you tonight. You shall seek them and shall not find them. Many of them are hiding in several corners laughing at you when they are coming out. Can I tell you, sooner you will not find them anymore. Amen. Even them who contended with you, they who war against you, shall be as nothing as a thing of the not, of not. Verse 13. For I, the Lord your God, will hold your right hand. Can I hear a resounding amen? amen? Saying unto you, fear not, for I will help you. Fear not, you warm Jacob. That's my key verse, verse 14. Fear not, you warm Jacob. Warm is something that looks breakable. Warm is something that is fumbling. Something that is very weak and slow. Something that has embarked on a journey he cannot finish by personal strength. He said, fear not, you warm Jacob. And you men of Israel, I will help you, says the Lord. And your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, verse 15, the last. Behold, I will make you a new sharp threshing instrument, having teeth. And you shall make, and you shall thresh the mountains, and, and beat them small, and shall and make the hills as chaff. The Lord bless the reading of his word Amen. in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Remember, my topic is still, help Lord, for I am weak and bleeding. What do we mean by the, by, by the term weak and bleeding? Number one, I said it means to be exhausted and yet very far from arrival. When our best yields decimal result, it's like a man embarking on a far journey and he's not halfway and his, his well tank, his well indicator is showing him low fuel. And he knows without divine intervention, without God coming down to do whatever only him can do, he will not get to his destination. He has exhausted what he has. And the journey seems to be still far. And yet, arrival seems too far. It is a period where your best can only yield a decimal result. When you say decimal result, you said a very small achievement. Where your best 
can only yield a decimal result. The Bible said the woman with the issue of blood found herself in a ridiculing and, and wickeding situation. Where the Bible said she expended all her wealth on physicians in order to cure her of her, of her bleeding situation, of the humble head she was experiencing. The Bible says they left her worse. So her case was both a wickening and a bleeding situation. Wherever you are hemorrhaging tonight, God is going to heal you. God is going to heal you tonight. In the name of Jesus. In the hemorrhaging financially. You have so many projects to carry out in precise time. And yet you have limited resources. Number two. What do we mean by the term? Weakening and bleeding situation. I said it means when you when you when you confided on on it, it means those you confided on or invested upon begins to walk away from you and and realigning with your fiercest fools. When those you confided upon, those you invested upon begin to walk away from you to realign with your with, with your fiercest fool, that is a weakening and a bleeding situation. So do you remember how much you've helped them? When it matters most, you thought they could, they, they could throw in their strength to you. They didn't just walk away, but you find them in the company of your enemies. That was the case of David in Psalm 3. He began to speak. He said, how are they increased that troubled me? Many people that have said, there is no help for his soul in the Lord. He said, for thou, O God, art a shield for me, my glory and the lifter up of my head. When men like, like Shimei, when men like Ahithophel, when men like Ahithophel could leave David's camp and went and joined Absalom's camp, and start revealing all the strategies of David to his fiercest enemy. Can I announce to you tonight, God is going to shock them. Amen. I said God is going to shock them. Amen. Because heaven is coming for your rescue. Amen. What do we mean by weakening and bleeding situation? Lastly there, we said it is when one tongue of event seems to erode your years of labor and, 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 and all the success you have recorded so far when just one turn of event you know I was listening to Pastor Sonia the larger the Nigerian with the largest church in Ukraine he said I left Ukraine with just myself and my and my wife he said my 35 years of labor and investment is just behind me now and I don't think I will ever see if I can ever set my feet again in Ukraine that's a weakening and a bleeding situation. But can I announce to you tonight that God who specializes in commanding light out of darkness, out of the debris and wreckages of your frustrations and wounds, a great light is coming forth. A great light is coming forth. Somebody shout hallelujah. Kinds of help. Because when we are talking about help, a lot of people mistaking the God kind of help from all kinds of help. Kinds of help, number one, we, we, I talk about requested help. Requested help is when you, you have many options. I said where you have, you still have many options. You can ask an uncle, you can ask a brother, you can ask a husband or a wife, you can ask children, you can ask well-wishers. You still have an option. That is requested help. And we have what is called emergency help. Emergency help is a kind of a um, situation where that leaves you with no option. It is whoever decides to help can help. You have no option. Everything is being laid on the line. We are survival propensities a hundred percent external to your safety boats. Where if nothing is done, you are swallowed. Can I announce to you tonight? I don't care the kind of situation where you find yourself. An emergency situation. It could be you are, you are now in ICU situation. ICU ward. Intensive care unit ward. Where your life is on the line. Help is coming your way this evening. Help is coming your way tonight. Help is coming your way tonight. In the mighty name of Jesus. Let me also talk about kinds of help. What do we mean by kinds of help? We have what is called personal help. We have what is called personal help. What is personal help? We said personal help is responding to life within your safety books. 
That's what is called personal help. Her responding to life within your safety force. That's personal help. When you can, when you are ready to do anything in order to find a way forward. Listen, many times we found out that even all what we thought we could do to remedy the situation amounted to nothing. That is what we call personal help. Bible says it is faith for we to look for help from natural sources. Personal help is one of the roots of natural sources. Responding to life within your safety vault, where you think the money you kept in the bank can respond to your life or deals. Where people begin to, to put fortifications around them that could respond in the day of hell. The Bible says the rich man had a very big, big, big farm. He harvested so much crops and he destroyed his, his previous barn and built a bigger and new barn. And he said to himself, oh my soul, relax, it is time to eat. And the Bible says that night his soul was requested. Self-help could not help him. Self-help could not help him. And we have what is called mutual help based on your entanglements. Mutual help. Those are the kind of help you you get from families. And many times, families many times are not there. Ask Job, he will tell you. It was Joseph's family that sold him to his own bread, to his own, to the Ishmaelite traders. What about Jesus? It was his own countrymen that were saying crucify him. Even when the publican, the, 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 the Gentile king, I mean, law said, I found no, I have found no, I have found no form of 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 of, of, of against this man. The Bible said that they said, No, crucify him. If you don't crucify him, we are going to report you to Caesar. You will no longer be a friend to Caesar. So can I tell you? Many people build family because they feel that when it matters most, family will be there. And many people have been disappointed big time. Because when they when it matters most, families we are not there. Many people raise children expecting that at all age children will come. And at all age children are still looking for survival. And suddenly it occurred to them that that investment was the wrong investment. Because it couldn't respond when they needed help from it. And lastly we have what is called supernatural help. That's the help I'm talking about. Supernatural help. That help that comes from God. When help comes through unexplainable unsolicited and unimaginable sources. Can I tell you tonight that the help I'm talking about is incalculable. You can't be able to decipher the source from where it's coming from. Help from sources you never bargain from. Bargain for. From people you don't know. Bible said drinking water from wells you never dug. Occupying lands you never paid for. Living in houses you never built. That is called supernatural help. When help comes through unexplainable, unsolicited, and unimaginable sources. I want to speak to you tonight. The Bible says when Jesus was carrying the, the cross on his way to, to, the, to, 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 to get so many to be crucified. Help came from nowhere. Suddenly a man called Joseph Are, 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 of Arimathea showed up and volunteered to assist a little. That was an element of, of, of unexplainable help. Even though he couldn't really carry, but at least he showed interest to carry. Can I announce to you tonight, God will send volunteers to your life. Amen. I said, God will send volunteers to your life. Amen. God will send men of great repute, men of substance, men of energy to really respond to your life. Amen. Let me quickly look at my textual truth. Words on the marble from that scripture I read. The revelations to make from that scripture we read. Remember we read from... Isaiah chapter 41 from verse 7 to 15. And I said my high points verse is verse 14. He said, fear not, you warm Jacob. And you men of Israel, I will help you. Fear not, you warm Jacob. And you men of Israel, I will help you. Says the Lord and your Redeemer, the mighty one of Jacob. Let's look at what's on the marble, number one. I said one of the ways to ensure that God comes through to your aid is to keep up with your life's engagements. Under God. God many times ensures 
He plants just one die-hearted fellow around you who helps to fan up your flames. Fan up the flames in a smoking flask. People who will not recommend a soft route as a palliative measure for pressure. God plants some persons around you and tell you if you have gone too far to go back. God plants some few people around you that tells you and said, No! Egypt is never an option. Even though we are played with your deals of the wilderness, Egypt is never an option. Egypt is never an option. The Bible said in that verse, in that verse, verse 7, we read precisely. Look at what it says there. It says suddenly in, in that chapter 11, 41 of Isaiah, verse 7, it says, so the carpenter encouraged the goldsmiths. The carpenter encouraged the goldsmith. It comes in a time when we are no more I know for ourselves. And suddenly, all that God can do before he comes is to keep somebody around who still tells you, all hope is not gone yet. At times, God can start speaking to you in your mind in case there is no one around. Because in the case of Job, there was no one. His friends came and looked at him. All they could do was to accuse him. His wife looked at him and tell him, give up. But the Bible says, Job said, if a man die, shall he live again. That is the comfort, the inner strength the Holy Ghost can grant. As I speak now, you are about to win the towel. Amen. Receive the strength of the Spirit. Amen. Receive the strength of the Spirit. Amen. Receive joy unspeakable. Nehemiah said, for the joy of the Lord is our strength. He said, we suddenly could have given up. He said, but the joy of the Lord suddenly became our strength. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. He says, so the carpenter encouraged the goldsmith and he who smote with the hammer, him who smote the anvil, saying, it is ready for the soldiering. And, the fast, and, and he fastened it with nails that it should not be moved. Sometimes people are God plants people around that begins to teach you how to take strategic steps. They begin to encourage you and tell you you are almost there. I want to pray now. May God send, 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 not just shock absorbers. May God send men of great strength around you. Amen. Men of might. Amen. Men with a hard heart Amen. that can tell you you've invested so much to allow this go down the drain. Number two things I want to say here. I said, I said, never lose sight on the truth that is, on the truth that there is an endorsement of grace upon your life. And thus, there is still a residue of hope that's, that must let, not be left to die. Look at what it says there in verse 8. It says in verse 8, it says, But you, O Israel, you are my servant. Can I announce to you that you are God's anointed? Amen. In spite of what was happening, God was trying to remind them, Don't forget that you are still my servant. That it will not end miserably. It's going to end in testimony. Never lose sight on the truth that there is an endorsement of grace upon your life. And thus there is still a residue of hope that must not be left to die. There is still a residue of hope that will not be left, that should not be left to die. In Job chapter 14, verse 7, Job was speaking. He said, If a man die, shall he live again? He said, All the expected days of my life, I will wait until my change come. Sorry, he says, he says there is hope for a tree, though it be cut down. He said, by the scent of water, it shall sprout again. You are connected to a scent of water. Amen. I said, you are connected to a scent of water. Amen. There is a resurgence of hope and, and grace that is flowing towards your direction now. Amen. Everything is coming back green again. Amen. Everything is coming back green again. Amen. You will not be dry in your lifetime. Amen. Your season, your greening season has just come. Amen. Can I announce you, it is time to plug and begin to draw. Amen. 
It is time to begin to plug and begin to draw. Amen. It is time to begin to plug and begin to draw. Amen. God is your destiny plug. Begin to draw this night. Amen. Begin to draw tonight. Amen. Begin to tell him, Lord, I have come to draw. I have come to draw. I have come to draw. Lord, I have come to draw. Jesus, 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 Plug it now and begin to draw. Plug it now and begin to draw. Plug it now and begin to draw. Lord, we have come to draw. We have come to draw. So we now lift up your spirit. Every form, every form of, of, of spiritual anemia, financial anemia. My Father, we plug it tonight. We plug it not be left to die. Tonight, as you plugged in, begin to draw. Amen. Begin to draw. Amen. I come and let virtue begin to flow from Emmanuel's spirit Amen. into your connections tonight. Amen. Flow into your ligaments. Amen. Flow into your organs. Amen. Flow into your tissues Amen. and systems of the body. Amen. Begin to flow into your financial Amen. life. Flow into your family. Amen. Flow into that business. Amen. In the name of Jesus, Amen. there is still a residue of grace. There is an endorsement of grace upon your life. Number three. I said all you need to do is to keep hearing that re-echoing re -re reassurance from God's spirit of divine accompaniment. All you just need to do is keep your ears still open to still hear that still small, small voice in the midst of the turbulence of the sea saying, turbulence of the sea saying, be not afraid, it is I, it is I, it is I. I am riding the wings of the morning, coming for your rescue. I said all you need to do is to keep hearing that re-echoing reassurance from God's spirit of divine accompaniment. Each time Moses turned and looked at the pillar of fire, it tells him that there is a divine accompaniment. Each time Moses turned back and looked at the pillar of, uh, uh, at the pillar of cloud, he, so he, he, he reminded him of the accompaniment of grace, of the accompaniment of divine presence. You are not alone. Amen. Amen. I said you are not alone. Amen. You are not alone. Amen. Look at what he said in that verse 10. He said, fear not, for I am with you. Fear not, for I am with you. Can I announce to you that God is with you? Amen. God is with you. Amen. He said, fear not, for I am with you. Amen. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. He said, I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Amen. Yes, I will help you. Amen. Yes, I will uphold you Amen. with the right hand of my righteousness. Amen. Number four, I said, don't make a mold on the doings of the adversaries. Don't make a mold. Don't concentrate on what the adversaries are, are saying. Stop giving an ear on the on on the on the on the on the words on the words of on on, on the on the words of serpents. You don't need the bleating of serpents. Is that looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith? Don't make a mold on the doings of the adversaries, the mockeries, the insults the ridicule, and etc. They are all under the surveillance of divine judgment. 
Listen, the things that are following close, close after you to wreck you down, they are under the surveillance of divine judgment. Amen. The Bible says, For so shall they fear the name of the Lord from the west, and his glory from the rising of the sun. That when the enemy shall come in like a flood, it says the spirit of the sovereign Lord will lift up a standard against them. Amen. Can I announce to you tonight that the Lord is lifting up a standard against every appearance of evil. Amen. Don't make a mold of it. Don't make a mold of it. Number 11, chapter, verse 11 and 12 of that Isaiah chapter 41. It says, behold, all they who were incensed against you shall be ashamed. And confounded, they shall be as nothing. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. And they who strive with you shall perish. To strive with you means those that are walking against you. Those that are spoiling things around. Those that are gossiping you, spoiling you behind. The Bible said they shall perish. Amen. Can I announce tonight? I said they are under divine surveillance of judgment. Amen. And verse 12 says, you shall seek them and shall not find them. Even them who con contended with you, they, they who war against you, shall be as nothing. Somebody shall glory. glory. Number five. I said God knows exactly how reckless and bizarre things really are. He promises to respond to the magnitude of his capacity. Can you increase that fire? God knows exactly. God knows exactly how reckless and bizarre things really are. And he promises to respond in the magnitude of his capacity and capability as God. And he will answer in the nick of time and at your best of interest. Nothing drastical will go wrong with you. Can I announce to you? Nothing is going to happen. Amen. No matter what happens, nothing is going to happen. Amen. In verse 14 of that Isaiah chapter 41, look at what the Bible says there. It says, Fear not, you warm Jacob. Fear not, you warm Jacob. God knows exactly how reckless and bizarre things really are. He looked at Jacob. He said, I can see you like a worm, fumbling around, tired and weak. Lacking capacity of continuity. He said, fear not. Stop looking at yourself. He said, fear not. He said, fear not. Fear not. Amen. He said, fear not that warm Jacob. Yes, Lord. Fear not that warm Jacob. He said, fear not. Fear not. That warm Jacob. He said, Fear not, that warm Jacob, for I will help you. Yeah. Fear not, that warm Jacob, Amen. I will help you. Amen. Fear not, that warm Jacob, I will help you. Amen. Fear not, that warm, that discouraged pastor, I will help you. Amen. Fear not, that rejected brother, I will help you. It's something that says, courage, brother, do not stumble. Though thy path be dark as night, they shall be. Though thy path be dark as night, reduce it a little. Fear not, thou warm Jacob. Fear not, thou warm Jacob. Fear not, thou warm Jacob. I will help you. When I read this scripture this, this afternoon, it resonated to my life. He said, fear not, I will help you. Fear not, I will help you. Fear not, I will help you. I don't know what has constituted fear in your heart. The Lord said, no, do not be troubled. Fear not means do not be troubled. Fear not means do not be troubled. Fear not, I will help you. Fear not means don't allow depression to overshadow you. Fear not, I will help you. Fear not, I will help you. Fear not. I will help you. That's the word of the Lord to somebody listening to me now. Amen. Fear not. I will help you. Even though somebody has said, I no longer want the marriage. Fear not. I will, I will help you. Somebody has said the marriage will no longer hold. Somebody has said the proposal is cancelled. Fear not. 
I will help you. The sack letter has been handed over to you. Fear not.